Hey guys, Tivik here and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. I hope you enjoyed the last episode, it was kind of a semi-dramatic reading of the last part, but I thought it would be fun doing something different for once. Anyhow, as I said before, I was going to make up a few plans on what to do. And in the last episode we didn't quite get to orbit, so that's our first step. So I'm gonna take this TSP-1 ship, the Tivik Space Program 1. Um, and we're gonna expand these. These were solid burners, if I'm not wrong. Uh, the solid fuel burners. Can I get some Rocomax on these? Hmm. Right, let's see. I suppose I could get two of these fuel tanks on each side like this. Oh, this is tricky. Come, on, there we go. And I, if I just move these up a little bit, about so, so I get a almost same center of gravity. Um, we we'll want to have some. These are just burners, and these do not have any vacuum. Oh, vacuum! Um, any control. So I'm gonna put these on. They have a little bit of more output, while this one can vector us a bit. This should be enough to get us into orbit. I'm pretty sure. But let's uh, rearrange the stages a bit. Move it like so. So all the engines will fire. And these, I think, will burn through the fuel a bit faster. Or maybe not. Hmm. I will want to do this. have them feed this one with fuel, which means that this will run out hope faster. Not sure. Um, but that should help a little bit. Alright. I'm ready to take the TSP-2 for a roll. And I'm not going to be doing so much roleplay style commentary on this one. I will do that for special moments. But this is just a test launch, so let's give it a shot, shall we? Let's uh, clear the launch pad. And it's taking a little while for this to load, I must admit, but that's fine. Oh, and I didn't get any... Oh, uh, that's gonna be bad. Um, well, we can just fire things up and get going. We're going pretty much straight up. So the trick here is to stay at a straight up slope until we hit a certain altitude. I'm gonna increase this. Yeah, they're burning a lot faster now, that's good. Um, once we hit about 10,000 meters, I'm going to do what's called a gravity turn. And I'm going to do it eastward. You see this ball here? It tells us the distance. Yep. This is 270, which is west, east, north. Oh, get rid of these. We didn't quite get to 10,000, so I might not get to altitudes I want, but we'll try. We will soon hit 10,000. 10,000. And I will start the gravity turn. We want to go about this direction, something like there, that much. That can be very tricky. And now let's take a look at this orbit of ours. We want to burn until we reach... Uh, we're not going to make that, are we? 
Actually, might. If we reach about 70,000 meters at our apoapsis, I should be fine. But we won't. Not on this stage. Probably on the next one. Which will probably get us up into space and then back down again. Alright, now we're burning. This one isn't very fuel economic. I shouldn't have gotten the vectoring one. There's absolutely no use for that. The other one is much better when it comes to burning. Oh well. We are one minute ag away from our apoapsis. How are we for fuel? Not bad, not bad at all. Let's aim for a hundred thousand. A uh, hundred kilometers. And Halson He's the guy we sent out in the last one. He's quite happy with this. He looked terrified. 101. That's going to be just outside atmosphere. We have a bit over half fuel left. We got some monopropellant fuel for our... for our... orbital maneuvering. So what we do now is we wait but we can speed up time. So, let's do that. Just to get the timer going there. So we can look at our shuttle. Oh. Probably shouldn't do that at time warp. I want to turn so I have the ground beneath me. Oh. It's a bit tricky to control. There we go. In about 50 seconds, we want to make a burn here. And we're going to burn prograde until, until we are almost at 100 on that one. 98. Gonna have to do this in two bursts. In 18 seconds. In 18 seconds. 10. Gonna burn now. Because the burn will take some time and we're gonna have to adjust this as we go. But just keep attempting to reach. Uh, we're running out of fuel fast. Let's check. Hmm. I do want to make sure that I have enough fuel to. There we go. We are in orbit. That's awesome, guys. We are in orbit. Unfortunately, we are very low on fuel, so here's the question. Will I have enough fuel to burn retrograde on our next lap here? I don't need a lot. Just a couple of seconds. Here's our launch pad. Perfectly marked up by the debris flowing towards the ground. Mm, I was thinking we can try for a uh, landing back home. If I manage to burn... But I won't manage to burn for that long, unfortunately. Let's see, if we do a timed burn about there... to a shallow entry into the atmosphere and aim for about there? What do you think about that? So, I should probably explain a little bit while I'm doing this. Uh, this uh, maneuvering tool here lets me decide on things to do with my path. And and that's probably not something I want to wanna do. Uh, this is something I need to practice for when we start doing docking. 
which is something I'm gonna add fairly soon. Right, let me fast forward here and um, aim for a landing. Can't go faster than this, but what we can do is we can already switch on the RCS. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And aim for our. Okay. If we aim for this point there. About there. Switch on the RCS. Switch off the RCS and go for the SAS again. Now we are actually going for that point. If you can see that isn't really moving. That should make us stay perfect on that spot. Well, it's drifting a little bit, but that's fine. All right, guys, here we go. We're coming up to the burn point. And I'm gonna go like that. And I'm not sure we have enough fuel. Nope, we did not have enough fuel, but we actually got a little bit of a better Using my monopropellant, I can actually boost myself a little bit here. Oh, 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 oh. Trying to move the expected point of entry a little bit further, but we are losing altitude now. We should be at least. Yep, fairly fast as well. So, if I can just get the boosters on here and then decouple, they should go for a while. Uh, go for a walk. <laughs> that way, this part won't be a problem for us. Okay, let's cut the throttle. And um, we are entering the atmosphere. Whoa! Let's make sure we're in the right direction here. Hopefully we won't get too far from the launch pad. Should be on the other side of the mountains here. Let's look. Here comes the atmospheric entry, which means that we will so quickly lose the altitude now. Um, once we get through this thicker atmosphere, we're going to start yeah, look at this we are now at 14,000 and uh, 12,000 and we are in thin atmosphere which means I pull the chute now to break and we're not too far, about 40 kilometers away in a bit of a mountainous area, but Halson will live to see another launch. But will he survive the next launch? I'm not sure. We'll see. So, it's clear that we need to add some more stuff. What is that? Rocks? Hmm. Let's uh, go walk and take a look at those. Uh, it's clear that we need some more oomph to get up into the atmosphere or around the orbit of the planet. Okay, let's go on the EVA. Oh, it's gonna take forever. Okay, we can end the flight now. Yes. Oh, let's go back to the vehicle assembly building. So, to add more oomph to these rockets, 
we can do this in a few ways. Um, add more of these stages, which I'm going to do. If I add another pair of these. Actually, I can do this. Now... This is called asparagus staging. I do think it's more like an onion peel, but asparagus is what they've named them. We will want these two. Let's see. That's that, and that's that. These are the last ones to separate. So what we basically do here is we fire up all thrusters. All the fuel will flow out of this tank and this tank first, since that one is also going to that. All right. Once all the fuel is in this tank, we disconnect this and send it off flying. And then we do the same until this one is the only one left. Awesome. We should also make sure that we connect these guys. Don't worry, it will come off. But it's just for extra security for when we are going up. They don't really weigh anything, so... It's okay. There we go. We only have these now to control the direction we're going. So I'm thinking if I move these and set these on this end. And now we get that. Should be fine if we just fire straight up. Um, because of the roll, I will get these control surfaces a bit better. Hopefully, this will work. I will also, real quick, uh, no, not you. I will move you down. And remove that for a non gimbal but more powerful engine. Perfect. And the fuel and the stages are still set up the same. Also, there's absolutely no use to have the twisting engines on that one. So we now have five engines. So I'm going to rename this the TSP-3 and save it. All right, let's give it a whirl. So I'm quite new at building rockets, which means that there's a lot of trial and error for me. I started to get a bit of a hang of it, and uh, I do understand some of the orbital maneuvers. Hopefully this will take us high enough. Oh, this belongs to stage 7. Uh, this will take us high enough to actually get us into orbit with fuel still in this tank here. So check stage. No fuel in this stage. Hmm. That was unfortunate. I think we could end the flight. Halson Kerman was killed. I suppose we add one to the dead list. Halson Kerman. Rest in peace because of the TSP-3 failed launch. So, how did that happen? These were put up there. So all the engines, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Someone needs to be fired. I think this one might be the guy who wasn't paying attention. So it's a TSP-4. Ready for launch. We have Greg Nick Herman now. He's a bit worried because the last launch, well, 
as we all know, it didn't go that well. So, are you ready? Let's fire up the thrusters. And lift off. SAS on. We are clear of the tower. And it's a bit wobbly. That's fine. Let's check the resources for this stage. The outer ones will almost be out in a second now. There we go. We let go of them. This is giving us a lot more oomph. We will have a lot more altitude from our rocket. We can now throttle up. We're headed close to 7,000, 8,000. I'm gonna start the gravity turn at about 12 or maybe 15,000 on this one. I'm gonna see if I can push to 15. Once the last fuel is out in this stage here, I will start the gravity turn. And we turn to about 90 degrees. We are a bit heavy, but it's fine. It's being compensated for. Perfect. We are now building a lot faster on our apoapsis here. And we have over half fuel left. And we're now down to half fuel. We're currently using 5.33 liquid fuel per second, yeah. I'm gonna burn this until we have an apoapsis at... Let's give it 120 to increase... No, we're gonna go 400. Perfect! Now, we don't have so much fuel left, but that's not too bad. Right. So this is just a small, uh, a small rocket. As you can see, it's only a one single pod here. And um, we can check from his camera angle here. All he's going to see is space. We have one minute to apoapsis. At which we will burn. Slowly turning our craft a little bit. Oh, it's heavy. Oh. We have gone past the apoapsis, so we need to burn. Now we need to really burn because we went way past apoapsis. Can remove that point there. As you can see now, my orbit is getting a bit tilted. This can be corrected once we get a proper orbit. But I do need to get an orbit first. If that is even possible. Wow, this is going to be a very strange orbit. But we do get an orbit at... Uh, I need to push this one. Okay, 56. That's fine. Alright, so... A bit of an oblong orbit. We're at 77 and will be as low as 56, which is not in the atmosphere, but almost. I switched off uh, the controls. 
Yeah, now we're in the atmosphere. Will I escape, though? Yeah, we should. What I'm going to do is once we reach the periapsis, I am going to make a maneuver. We can do that. Oh, it's going to be a very quick search. Uh, to burn, uh, to break a bit. So we need to switch on the RCS thrusters and turn around until we can get a stable burn here. Doing this will lower our apoap apoapsis down. We need it to be about there. Unfortunately, we are seem like we're going to run low on fuel again. Ah. And since we're so low down now, we can't warp faster than four times till we're about well because of the actually because of the planet we are now getting pulled lower but we are gaining altitude again very good I'm letting it tumble and Gregney is not liking that sorry Gregney Right, I think we're going to have to be doing this for safety and pulling him down to orbit again. Um, let's see. Yeah, we don't have so much fuel, so might as well just get him down. So, my next episode, since I see that we are running low on time here, we are going to aim for putting a craft in a solid orbit with still some fuel. I'm going to have to go for a bigger rocket. Um, we could probably build with some bigger fuel tanks or maybe some solid fuel boosters. Um, whoa, not the speed I intended. There we go. Oh, but we're at full speed there. That's... Yeah, that's why. Yeah, so some solid fuel boosters should help. And maybe some bigger rockets. But what I want to do... Oh, look at that. We are getting a sunrise. Nice. Gregney does not look pleased with that. Uh, spin them around. Yeah. And once we do get a bit of... I don't want to have the auto, I think. Is there a difference? Sorry about that. Yeah, auto should do. Five minutes to burn. We arrange our thrust a little bit in that direction. There we go. Two minutes, one minute, 30 seconds. Turn on the SAS. And uh, let's uh, get ourselves out of orbit. And while I am getting this poor Gregney Kerman out of orbit, I am going to round this episode off. Okay, that's an annoying camera. Let's go for the, not the orbital, the auto. Or the free. Yep, we got enough velocity to get out of orbit. Let's... Um, 
RCS this a little bit and unplug from the rest of the ship. Anyhow guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. This is just a little bit of a experimentation episode. Uh, in the next one I will uh, have a rocket ready that will take me into orbit, which means I will also do a bit of experimentation off camera. And what I want to do in the next episode is do some real orbital maneuvers. And uh, that means we're gonna go and change how the orbit looks. I could probably show you a little bit like this. If we have an orbit, I want to do some maneuvers like tilting it, um, changing its location, like like a hula hoop, um, and how to catch up with other orbits. But that's going to be in the next episode, and uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this one. Take care from Gregney, and uh, I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.